What's going on, family? I'm Scrapbook Boxing, Museum of the Forgotten Fisticuff Series. Let's continue to examine 100 years of world championship fights. May 9th, 1941. Billy Seuss, who's to your left, knocks out Ken Overland, who's to your right. And Ken Overland would become middleweight champion of the world when he defeated Sefrino Garcia. But he would go 15 rounds with Billy Seuss. He would come up short. New York's Madison Square Garden. And Billy Seuss would become the new middleweight champion of the world. Now, who was Billy Seuss? He was born August 2nd, 1915 in Farrell, Pennsylvania. He died September 5th, 1998. He was 83 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Farrell, Pennsylvania. Now, I met Billy Seuss. He fought from 1938 to 1942. Had a total bout career of 41 bouts, 34 wins, 6 losses, 13 knockouts, and 1 draw. He would win a New York sack, and the referee was Arthur Donovan. He had it 8 to 7 for Billy Seuss. Now, Seuss was 25 years old. He stood 6 foot and a half inches. He weighed 158 pounds, and he had a 73 inch reach. Came into the ring with a fighting career record of 31 wins, 4 losses, and 12 draws. As for Ken Overland, he was 30 years old. He stood 5 foot 9 inches, weighed 159 pounds, and had a 70 inch reach. Walked into the ring with a record of 123 wins, 18 losses, 7 draws, and 20 knockouts. Billy Seuss, Ken Oberlin, were getting on on the night of May 9th, 1941 for the middleweight championship belt. One more note on Billy Seuss. He was a dynamic amateur fighter, collegiate fighter, fought in college. And he was a knockout machine. Threw straight punches, very hard, good jab. He was tall for his weight division. And as a matter of fact, he was banned from fighting in any more amateur fights. They thought he was a professional. He was that good as a, as a fighter in the amateurs. So Billy Seuss would become the middleweight champion when he defeated Ken Oberlin. May 9th, 1941, New York's Madison Square Garden. May 12th, 1941, Joey Archibald defeats Harry Jeffer, 15 rounds, Washington, D.C. He will remain the Bantamweight champion of the world. May 22, 1941, Gus Lesnovich, who was to your left, defeats Anton Christophe, to your right. 15 rounds, New York's Madison Square Garden. To win the NBA light heavyweight championship belt. The referee was Frank Foreman. He had 11,676 spectators in the crowd. Now, who was Gus Lesnovich? He was born February 22, 1915 in Cliffside Park, New Jersey. He died February 28th, 1964. He was 49 years of age at the time of his death, and he would reside in Cliffside Park. He stood 5 foot 9 inches. He was a middleweight and light heavyweight. He was the 1947 Ring Magazine of the Year. 1934-1940. Died at the age of 49 in his doctor's office. Suffered from a heart attack. Remarkable. Fighter was Gus Lesnovich. The only issue with Gus Lesnovich, he froze out black fighters in Black Murray's role. Didn't give opportunities to Ezra Charles, and Jimmy Bivens, Archie Moore, or shot at the title. And he was stopped by Freddie Steele. I believe it was the second round. Freddie Steele was a dynamic puncher, excellent body puncher, beautiful left hook and straight right hands. Had a nice jab. Almost as good of a body puncher as Billy Patrol, Fargo Express. Now, Anton Christopher was 23 years old. He stood 5 foot 8 inches. Had a 72 inch reach. Had a record coming into that bout of 43 wins. 9 losses, 7 draws, and 10 knockouts. Gus Lesnovich was 26 years old. He stood 5 foot 9 inches. He had 50 wins, 7 losses, 5 draws, and 16 knockouts in that bout. Very good fight between these two men, Gus Lesnovich and Anton Christophoides. Gus Lesnovich would become the NBA Lightning Weight Champion of the World on the night of May 22nd, 1941. New York's Madison Square Garden.